हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स एंड हाइड्रोलिक मशीन्स माय सेल्फ ध्रुव पटेल इन अवर टुडेज लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट लास्ट टॉपिक फॉर द हाइड्रोलिक मशीन्स दैट विल बी फ्लूड कपलिंग टॉर्क कन्वर्टर एंड एयर लिफ्ट कॉम राइट सो लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्लूड कपलिंग्स सो बेसिक फंक्शन ऑफ द फ्लूड कपलिंग्स इट इज यूज फॉर ट्रांसमिटिंग पावर फ्रॉम और टॉर्क फ्रॉम द वन साफ टू द अनर साफ Without use of any mechanical connection between driver and driven shaft. Clear students? I repeat again, fluid coupling is used to transfer torque or power from driver shaft to driven shaft without any mechanical connection between them. Right? Now let us understand basic functions of fluid coupling and basic construction of fluid coupling. So this is image of fluid coupling, 3D animation of fluid coupling. So at the driver shaft, remember this. This is driver side. One pump impeller is mounted. Clear? And at the driven shaft, one turbine rotor is mounted. Turbine rotor. Remember, students, at the driver shaft, pump impeller is mounted. And on the driven shaft, one turbine rotor is mounted. So let us understand working of the fluid coupling with small animation video. So from that video, we can understand that whenever the driver shaft is rotated, some pump impeller is al always rotating, right? With the use of centrifugal action in the fluid, the turbine rotor is always rotating with the use of fluid centrifugal action. So with the use of fluid, we can couple driver shaft and driven shaft without any mechanical connection between them. that is basically actual working of fluid coupling right let us take close look in the construction of the fluid coupling so this is basic example of working phenomena of fluid coupling suppose we have two fans and both the fan are mounted on the parallel to the each other at one fan is mounted on the in front of the another fan suppose this is driver fan and this is driven fan so if we supply electricity to the driver fan then the driver fan is rotating with the use of electricity at some rpm the air is also considered as a fuel right so with the rotation of the air or with the supply of the air our of uh, second fan is also rotating with the some speed right not exactly the speed as the driver fan but speed less than that driver fan that is known as our fluid coupling principle so let us take close look of the construction of the fluid coupling so this is driving shaft right this is pump impeller we can say this is called as pump impeller this is fluid is filled with the pump impeller and turbine impeller so this is driven shaft and on the driven shaft we have to attach turbine rotor or we can say turbine impeller so this is turbine rotor right so power of the pump impeller will be transferred to the power of the turbine rotor with the use of fluid action now one simple question arises in our mind that why sir we have to use pump impeller at driver shaft and turbine impeller at other shaft so let us understand answer of that question from this sketch right we have already studied pump chapter and turbine chapter we already know about it that pump impeller and turbine impeller both are same and identical shape but exactly opposite working phenomena right so liquid from the driving shaft will be moving through the axial direction right to the pump impeller and in the pump impeller liquid will moving in the outward side with the centrifugal action action of the impeller so liquid will moving in the that boundary direction with the use of boundary liquid in the radial direction at the turbine blade liquid will always enter in the radial direction so this liquid is entered in the turbine blade in the radial direction and with the rotation of turbine blade liquid will go outer side in the axial direction so that is exactly opposite construction and working in the pump side liquid will enter in the axial direction and with the centrifugal action liquid will go outer side or radial direction to the impeller after that turbine impeller will get liquid from the radial side and it will move liquid outer side direction to the driver driven shaft clear students so that is basic construction and working of fluid coupling so we can transfer motion of the driver shaft without couple any mechanical connection and we can transfer motion of the driver shaft to the driven shaft after that let us understand some basic small small gifs from the fluid coupling so at the first the red side marks here shown here that is known the red side mark shown here that is known as pump impeller 
I again repeat, this is pump impeller, right? And yellow side that is known as turbine rotor. Pump impeller that is known as driver side and turbine is known as driven side. So at first, red side is rotating. See here in this phase one, red side that means pump impeller is rotating. See here in the phase two, with the rotation of the pump impeller, right turbine impeller is also rotating. With the rotation of the pump impeller, turbine impeller is also rotating. And at the phase three, during the high speed of the pump impeller, turbine impeller is also rotating with the high speed because of the transmission of the power from the fluid. And at the last speed, if we decrease the speed of pump impeller, then speed of turbine impeller is also decreasing. So here at the last, if we decrease the speed of the pump impeller, then turbine impeller is also decreasing speed. Clear students? So that is basic construction and working of the fluid coupling. Right students? So let us revise this GIF construction again. So at the first, whenever the only pump impeller is rotating, right? At the second, when the pump impeller is rotating, the turbine impeller is also rotating. In the third, example is given that if the pump impeller is rotating in the higher speed, then turbine impeller is also rotating in the higher speed, right? So in the third, we will get if the pump impeller is rotated at the higher speed, then turbine impeller is also rotated at the higher speed. And at the last, if the pump impeller reduce its speed, then turbine impeller is also reduce its speed. That is known as fluid coupling without any mechanical connection. Clear students? So that is schematic diagram of the fluid coupling. So in the examination, you have to draw this type of diagram. This is driving shaft. On the driving shaft, pump impeller is mounted. This is driven shaft. On the driven shaft, turbine rotor is mounted. There is some gap between pump impeller and turbine impeller. This gap is filled with the fluid, right? That is known as fluid coupling. Clear students? So now let us understand torque converter. So what do you mean by torque converter? So function of the torque converter will be used for transmitting variable torque from the driver shaft to the driven shaft. In the fluid coupling, we have to transfer some amount of fluid force or we can say some amount of rotation to the driver to the driven shaft. But in the turbine or in the torque coupler or torque converter, we have to transfer some amount of torque to the driver to the driven shaft. So it is advanced version or improved version from the fluid coupling, right? So see this GIF and let us understand torque converter. So in from this GIF, left hand side wheel that is known as as usual pump impeller. Right, right hand side that is known as turbine rotor, turbine rotor at intermediate that is known as guiding vanes, guiding blades or we can say gliding vanes because it is used for guiding the fluid to the pump to the turbine rotor, right. Now let us understand what is working of torque converter and what how to construction of torque converter. So see in this GIF the pump impeller is rotated, fluid is transferred from the pump impeller to the turbine impeller with the use of this guiding blade. This is additional amount of work in this torque converter. So let us understand torque converter sketch by this construction. So this is driving shaft A. On this driving shaft, pump impeller will be mounted, right? This is driven shaft. On the driven shaft, turbine runner is mounted. Between the drive pump impeller and turbine runner, third one stationary guide vanes will be mounted, which is used for guiding water to the turbine impeller from the pump impeller, right? Now how the torque converter will work? Suppose we have to use only two wheels. One first one will be pump side and second one will be from turbine side. Clear students? As similar to the fluid coupling. So what happened here? Whenever the water is coming from the pump side, it will directly impact to the turbine side, right? It will directly impact to the turbine side at some RPM. Suppose turbine RPM will be in this direction and pump fluid will be impacted from this direction. Then some amount of losses with the use of pump impeller fluid, right? That is our losses. So for the removal of these losses, we have to use one stationary guide vanes between pump and turbine wheel. So what happens? Some amount of fluid will be coming out from the pump impeller, right? It will go to the stationary guide vanes and the guide vanes guide the fluid to the turbine blade at some particular angle. So rotation of the turbine wheel 
it's increasing right and we can get multiplication of the torque so after that multiplication we can obtain multiplication of the torque at the every stage so we will transfer torque to the driving shaft to the driven shaft clear students so use of stationary guide vanes is to guide the fluid at some angle or at we can say at some some suitable angle to the turbine blade so turbine blade can rotate or we can transmit some amount of torque at higher rate than fluid coupling that is purpose of torque converter and with the use of stationary guide vanes we can do multiplication of the torque so at the last stage we can find we can transmit torque from the driving shaft to the driven shaft that is basically working of torque converter yes okay, students and at the last let us understand air lift pump so function of the air lift pump is used to lift the water from the deep well or sump by using compressing air right we can use submersible pump for that purpose also but we all already aware about it submersible pump will be located in the downward side of the water right for the maintenance purpose or any other work purpose we have to moving in the downward side and then we have to take submersible pump to the outer side that is very diff much difficult so we are using here air lift pump which is compressed air lift pump and then we have to take lift to the water right so let us understand basic construction of the air lift pump so this is bore well here in that bore well this is water outlet pipe from that water outlet pipe from the outer side we have to attach one air compressor here from the air compressor one air pipe will be attached here with the use of air nozzle remember this at the end of the air pipe one air nozzle will be mounted with the use of this construction we can get some amount of water at the outer side or particular height clear yes, students so let us understand basic working of the air lift pump so whenever the air compressor is started here some amount of compressed air will be moving from this delivery pipe with the use of air nozzle the function of the nozzle is to find spray of the air in that delivery pipe right in that delivery pipe some amount of water is always mounted with the particular small edge height right so water is available at this height small edge right if we supply some amount of fine amount of water fine amount of air spray in that water then in this side remember student in this side what happens in this side water plus air will be there because from the compressor some amount of compressed air bubble will be there so in this side in this circle some amount of water and air will be there so density of water and air mixer is always less than density of water which is stored in bore well right so at the outer side of the bore well higher amount of water will be there and at the inner side of the suction pipe lower amount of density of the water and air will be there so pressure got reduced here in the uh, inner side right so water will be always moving in the higher side water will be always moving to the lower side from the higher side so here higher density of water in the outer side of the bore well so from the outer side of the bore well water is moving in the lower density side of the pipe so from that construction water will moving at the some particular height h and we will get water at the outlet section with the use of density difference right so this is simple construction of the air lift pump we have to simply mix the water and air at some particular level so this is lower density than the outer fluid right so due to that density difference water will naturally move to the delivery pipe and we can get some amount of water at some particular height h so there is some limitations of the air lift pump also we can only obtain water at some particular height we cannot obtain water below beyond that particular height that is basic limitation of air lift pump and there is one advantage also that is compressor is mounted at the outer side of the water that is maintenance cost is low for this air compressor or we can say this damage is less for this air compressor so with the use of this compressed air we can get water to the outer side of the bore well right so that is it from the today's point of view thank you for watching my lecture and keep revising fluid mechanics